Hello, everyone. How's it going? Can you hear me? Oh my god, that was a squeak. What a good way to start this off. My my chair is squeaking. That's wonderful. How's it going, everyone? Um, all right. I just need to get my uh, iPad uh, set up. Uh, let me do that, and then I'm good to go. Only came for the chair squeak. That's true. Um, that's why I watch anything is to hear chair squeak. Oh, what's up, Alex? You know, I was actually going to start off um, my stream and be like, you know, one of the best ways to learn this software is just go watch Alex's tutorials. Um, so I'm, I'm still going to do that because I think that what you made is really awesome. Um, yeah. All right. It looks like I got my uh, iPad going. Uh, okay. So I'm going to switch over to me now. Okay, what about now? Now you can hear me. I was just saying while I was silent that technical difficulties are like par for the course when you're streaming. Like you have to have at least one, maybe two technical difficulties. Does the level sound good? Is it peaking at all? The um the microphone? How does it sound? I haven't done this enough to know what like good levels are. Good, good, good. Nice to see you, Lauren, Koopa, uh, Cameron. How's it going? Live squeak. Very true. Very true. <laughs> um, so I might do that sometimes like this <laughs> thing with my uh, nose. That's just because I, I uh, have allergies and it's hard to breathe sometimes. You know how it goes. Uh, Kukin. I don't know if I said your name right, but hello. Nina, how's it going? Colin, what's up, man? Oh, it's nice to see so many uh, familiar faces and stuff. The sniffles make it real. So true. Um, okay, I'm going to let this play in the background because it, it looks like it should be impossible in dreams, and I like that. Uh, so, um, yeah. So a little bit about me and this stream. Uh, my name is Michael Relf. Uh, I am... An illustrator, animator. Um, I guess I do a lot of different things, and um, I, I've worked in a number of different uh, industries. I guess like doing <clears throat> motion graphics animation and doing design, doing illustration, children's books, a little bit of TV animation design, and most recently these like Procreate commissions, and a lot of a lot of commercial animation too. Uh, both. 3D character and 2D character. So I've done a lot of stuff, and I feel like that um, uh, came has come in handy a lot recently when when pursuing some of these projects. Like for instance, the, the Procreate commissions in particular. Having like um, done many things, it was it was very helpful for me. So, anyways, that's that's kind of like my professional career stuff. Um, if any of you are here from Instagram, uh, most of the stuff that I Share there is just plain air painting. And that's something that I like doing just for myself. So if there are any other plain air painters in the chat, how's it going? Um, hi. <laughs> um, anyways, so that's a little bit about myself. I have a, um, have you did anything from Duolingo? I don't know what that means. Um, I'm reading the chat right now. Uh, so I have had a lot of experience with this uh app the software at this point because i did two commissions for procreate in the like super early builds of the of the app when it was um in like alpha and beta builds so and, and i think i spent probably i mean if i had to guess like somewhere in the range of like 500 to a thousand hours drawing in this program so 
I'm very comfortable with it. Even so, there are things that I don't know and things that I'm still learning. So I'm excited to show you what I know, and um, hopefully we can learn some new stuff together. The reason why I wanted to do this stream is that uh, I think that there's a little bit of a barrier for entry with the, the interface and the technology and figuring out like what all these things mean. And so I'm hoping that I can show you like some of the basics that help everybody get past that initial technological barrier and get to creating stuff that they really want to create. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. I'm going to back out of this guy right here. Also, <clears throat> excuse me, if you go to my uh, gum road, which is here, um, this pink folder right here, which just means I didn't upload an icon, <laughs> um, is free and it has some Procreate Dream files that you can check out. One, <laughs> Colin says 500,000 hours. That's a more accurate estimation. Um, one of the files in the free Procreate Dreams thing, which is, which is free, is $0, um, is like this cube that we can move around together to try and get that fake 3D. And then if you want the more, like the fancier files with my art in it, I, I put that as like a $5 kind of thing. And it also includes um, some... Brushes that I found are really good for cleanup and fills and stuff. So if you want to support me and check this out, that's cool. If not, you can you can get the free one as well. So you know it's 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 entirely up to you um, if you want to get any of these files and, and follow along. Also, you could just draw you know um, straight into the program and and draw along with me. Cool. So I wanted to get into like the very basics to, to start and. Um, also, I would just like to encourage anybody, if you have any questions, I could like address questions live and kind of show you um, like concepts and, and things in, in real time. Um, so the, the way that I like to work in this program is uh, just going in and drawing something. Uh, so um, actually, maybe I should start off at the, at the basics. Let's open a brand new file. Here's, here's a good one. Thumbs up. Right. So when you, um, I'm going to go back further, we're going to do a new file, 4K, uh, you can set the frame rate and the duration up there. We're going to do five seconds, 24 frames per second, which um, I usually work in 24 frames per second. So I have the option of like choosing, I'm going to hold a drawing for four frames. Or I'm going to hold a drawing for three frames or one frame. Although usually every animation I do ends up being about like two frames per drawing. So anyways, we'll start here and I'm going to click empty. And then you can just um, drag this little guy right here. I actually don't know how to show it because I don't have like a um, um, this guy right here. This little knob right here, you can drag that down and then it turns into flipbook. And I like doing that because then it um, makes it so you can uh, have more room to draw on your canvas. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, the gesture from Procreate where you like clear the canvas is the same in this. You just put three fingers on your screen and, and move them around in a circle and then that clears everything out. Um, yeah, I'm going to actually delete this content is what it's called. And I'm going to drag down on the top to get out the flipbook and then I'm just going to start drawing something. So let's do like the, like a bouncing ball or whatever, cause that's very easy. Um, so I'm just going to do one drawing. And then the way I like to work is just going over to this flip book, turning on my onion skins by tapping this guy right here, the little um, timer, and then just drawing over and then continuing to draw, clicking over on this flip book. Um, and this might all seem very basic, but I'm going to, uh, we're going to gradually get into very, very complicated stuff. I mean, uh, we're going to get into stuff where we're getting into the nitty gritty of like grouping things and the timeline and, and, and all that fun stuff. So, super amazing bouncing ball. Uh, and then, oops. I know, I know you're all impressed by this. I, I'm certainly impressed. And I don't want to uh, redo, redo those drawings where it comes back up because I'm lazy. So I'm just going to duplicate this whole thing. So if I hold down on anything on this track right here, 
Go to track options and say duplicate. Don't need this one again, but I'm just going to drag all these guys over to make it play backwards. So I don't have to redraw it because um, I don't want to. And there are so many times animating professionally where I'm just like copying and pasting things. <laughs> and then um, so and, and then like adjusting. So now it's playing too fast. And that's because, well, I don't want these to play for one frame. I want them to play for two frames. So I'm going to group all these guys down here together. And I'm going to tap on this little guy right here, which is this icon, this little three stacked, uh, sorry, two stacked squares right here. I also select them all at the same time and paste them on the same track. You can? I didn't know that. Hold on. That can't be real. Let me try this. Select them all right here. You go like this. And then you like copy. And paste, is that how it works? Or duplicate, oh, I don't know. Maybe I haven't learned this one yet. I'm struggling, uh, duplicate. It seems to only duplicate the one. I haven't figured out how to get it to duplicate everything. Maybe like this. Oh, you can copy and paste a bunch of stuff. I just learned something. That's amazing. Thank you so much. All right. Well, let's do that the proper way then. I'm going to get rid of all of these. Um, actually, now that I have them down, I'll, I'm going to use that in the future. Thank you so much. Uh, that was very, uh, very useful. Um, Alicia brought, I'm going to butcher your last name. I'm so sorry. Learning in real time while teaching in real time. <laughs> so true. Um, so this is something that I just learned. Uh, my friend Ale was messing around with dreams on Discord and uh, I saw him do this and I didn't know you could do this. So if you select all your frames at once and then you hold on the, um, the edge of one of the frames and then tap anywhere else, tap and hold anywhere else on your screen, you can re-time all the frames at the same time. So I'm going to do that. Um, it's, it's, it's a few gestures. So one is selecting everything. Uh, the next step is holding like right here, like sort of on the edge of the frame and then anywhere else on your canvas and then just stretching them out to like three frames or two frames. I'm going to do two frames in this case. And I was like, whoa, I didn't know you could do that until very recently. Um, <laughs> Alex learned this trick recently. I, it was, it was hidden for me. Um, and then this is the one thing that uh, a lot of people have asked and Alex actually had in his uh, tutorial in his recent like things you might not know about, um, about Procreate Dreams is you can uh, change the timing of things pretty easily if you understand this one gesture. So it's basically holding on the edge of the frame with one finger, holding anywhere else in the interface uh, with your other finger, and then dragging this finger to readjust timing. So I'm going to do that right now. So holding on the edge of this frame, anywhere else in the interface, and now I can change the timing of this layer, uh, this drawing, and it'll adjust the timing of everything else. And that's, that's very, very useful for retiming your drawings. Um, all right, and we're still staying with the basics, but the next thing is, what if you wanna take this guy right here and you wanna like change the opacity of the whole thing? Um, uh, that was so helpful. I was wondering how do you do that? We'd be going over the select option. Uh, just be careful you don't enter hyperspeed undo when you do that. <laughs> hyperspeed undo. Oh yeah, I've actually accidentally done that too. Yeah, because you you are double tapping on the screen. Um, so what I'm going to show next is like something that I do all the time. So we're going to select all these layers right here. So this is the selection tool once again, which exists right here. Um, we're going to hit that. We're going to uh, select all these layers. Uh, another thing I learned from Alex's uh, tutorial uh, is um, uh, enable timeline edit with finger. If you turn that on, you don't have to have your Apple pencil out to 
um, select these things. You can do it with your finger, which is a lot more intuitive for me. Um, okay, and then I'm going to turn off this select mode, turn off the two boxes. No, actually leave it on. Sorry. Um, hold down on one of these guys and hit group. So now these guys are grouped. And what I can do is go to the very beginning of this group, set an opacity keyframe, and just make it really faint. Now, um, since I tend to work this way, like I'll do something, and then I'll be like, that's not quite right. And then I'll like put it on a low opacity and then draw over it, and then be like, oh, that's not all right. And put that new thing on a low opacity and draw over it. This is the way that I tend to like work. Um, so if I wanted to, I could take um, a new track on top of this with um, my cleanup brushes and begin doing cleanup on this guy. Go. I can draw a perfect circle. I swear to God. I might not be able to right now, but I swear I can. I can't. It's it. And then um, this, the, I made this brush so that it, it, it's like a textured brush that's easy to, to clean up. So it's called Easy Fill. It's easy to fill in the software. So, yeah, now I can make this new layer and do uh, a really awesome job at drawing a circle over and over again. Um, and so I'm going to open up that other example that I had there. So if I was to keep going, it would, I could clean it up forever. <clears throat> I need some, some water. My mouth's dry. So I just put this little guy together to kind of show everyone the basic process of uh, like kind of the steps that one might take. Um, and so uh, the first the first thing that you're going to want to do when you're like animating anything is just like get your idea down. And so you'll see uh, if you look at like um, what is considered rough animation, even for like Disney animators or really good anime uh, artists, um, like it's, it's usually really, really rough and scratchy, like just trying to get the feeling of the thing down. Um, and then the process I've been doing in inside of dreams is like pretty much what I just showed you. I take the rough pass and I put it at a lower opacity and then I, I do the next step where I tie things down. This is just like deciding, okay, there's so many lines drawn on this rough pass. Where am I going to put the more like cleaned up more like um, uh, decided lines. And then once that's in, I'll drop that opacity and put it over, you know, over here. And then put um, a final line that's going to be the final thing that people see in the actual animation plays and then go into fill. And that's that's one way you could work. Um, the way that I actually love to work, I'm going to show you that right now, is skipping all that starting with roughs and then just going right in and, and painting stuff right off the bat. So I'm going to take this rough layer right here, rough layer, and I'm going to uh, group it. And then I'm going to go down here and go to my opacity and put it a lot lower. Um, I'm going to make a new track underneath. I'm going to get like a nice fun textured brush and choose any kind of color. What color should I do right here? Like a, like a blue, like blue. I'm gonna make it green. Okay, cool. So, sick. All right. Um, so this is something that I like doing, going straight from roughs into like shape painting. I think it's maybe because I'm a painter and I don't know. I just, I like, I like putting down shapes and making, you know, filled in shapes a lot more than, um, than drawing lines. So this is another way that I think is totally valid to work. And you skip a lot of steps. This is actually how I animated like all of, um, the Procreate Commission um, Garden Garden Quest, uh, uh, which 
Sorry, I'm getting distracted right now. Uh, Garden Quest. So I, I, I pretty much did rough animation, and then I just went straight in and animated, uh, uh, painted in the frames underneath, and like used a lot of guessing and interpretation to to paint them correctly based on like really really rough animation. And I can totally show you guys that uh, a little bit later, like on another stream when I when I have those project files like prepped and ready to to look at on stream. Um, twelve point nine inch. I don't know. Is that like the iPad size? What whatever the bigger iPad is, that's the one that that I have. I think unless they made it like an even bigger one. Can you imagine like a like a I don't know like a table sized iPad that would be absurd but I would not put it past this fruit company to make a giant device and like market it in a way that seems like you need it i table exactly all right so this is you know this is another approach that one might take is just painting your animation directly and I I personally I think it's really cool looking Duplicate. You know, maybe I should try that that approach of um, copying and pasting. Like so, so I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna go over here and paste. Oh my god, that's so good. Well, that's gonna save me like so much time in the future. So thank you. Um, I forgot who who gave me that tip, but that's very very smart. First these. Now that should play. I have them offset a little bit, so let me move them back into position. Cool. Now I'm gonna group the uh, track options, hide all. <laughs> so this is actually, I think, my preferred way to work is like once you have um, roughs, just to like go in and paint something. It lends itself to like a much um, sort of like rough and textured and more stylized painted approach. Um, yeah, so it's it's just one way, you know, like this is like the general approach for um, for animating to have these different stages of rough, tie down, clean up, fill, and, and some like really um, high fidelity productions have even more steps in between. But... <laughs> I just wanted to show this as a way to explain probably the most uh, amount of steps that I would do um, animating in, in Dreams. Let me check the chat really quick. Can you import brushes in Dreams? Yeah, it's really easy. I'll show you that right now. Um, so let's go to Procreate. Open up a different one. This one. This was going to be an example, but it, it didn't work. Failed example. So if you have Procreate on the right right here and you split screens like this, and I want to import, let me find a brush, like one of my <laughs> brushes I want to bring into here. Um, this one could be fun. Maybe a rake brush here. I'll bring in wash thick rectangle. Um, I'm just going to take it right here and drag it over dreams on this side right here. Boom. Um, and then if I slide back over, go to my brushes, go to imported, now imported at the bottom. Now I have gouache thick rectangle. Woohoo! So I have this brush. Yay! Cool! So that's how you import stuff, uh, brushes into Dream. So, um, I wanted to select one part of a frame and move it without affecting the whole frame. How do I do that in Dreams? So, um, unfortunately, you can't yet. Um, I think that that's something that is still in the works. Um, and I think, as an explanation, um, Dreams is a completely new piece of software that looks a lot like, you know, it, the other software that this company makes, which is Procreate. But it's it's built on an entirely different engine. So um, I think that they uh, they have to like sort of rebuild the lasso tool and and, and stuff. And um, I would love to see it in the software. And I believe that it it will be coming coming um, 
or paint mentioned something to that effect that it's like it'll be in the next update or very soon so yeah i i would also uh like that in the software uh for all the commissions i did if there was something that i need to adjust slightly it would come down to me uh drawing over the top of it and then um like on a new layer and then erasing and redrawing painting or whatever so it was just a lot of uh it felt you know very similar to um when uh like working traditionally where you all you have is like an eraser or like more pieces of paper to put on top so i don't know i don't hate that but i would like the uh lasso tool and transform um yeah so let's see here we got through the basics of um the interface stuff does anyone have any other like additional like interface questions like how you get into um you know layers or retiming or the timeline or flipbook or whatever let me know i will say one thing that i noticed that's kind of interesting is um and this is this is still in the very like basic sense is you can um make new drawings in, in a bunch of different ways so i can do it in the flipbook right and make a new drawing and then on the flipbook, I can hit this plus button to make a new drawing. I can also just go over to a blank frame to make a new drawing. Also, if I'm in the if I have the timeline open and I make a new drawing, um, it'll make a drawing that extends through the whole length of the timeline. If I don't want that to happen in the context of the timeline, um, I can push this frame all the way over, go into my drawing mode and tap uh okay tap on this drawing zoomed all the way in i don't know why you have to be zoomed all the way in but if you are you get this plus button right here so i can add a new drawing this way and it added the whole length of the thing i don't know why it does that that's fine because if i do a drawing here right and then i want to add a drawing after this frame that's blank i can do that so there is there are workarounds to some of the strange things that the software does sometimes. Um, yeah. Uh, I got a question. Can you select several frames and move them together? For, for some reason, I was not able to do it. The only way I figured out to select multiple... Look at this great animation. I know, I'm an animator. Um, select multiple frames to move them is you have to commit them to a group. So I select all of them and group them, and then I move the whole group and scale it and rotate it or whatever. Um, the only unfortunate part about this is if I ungroup it, they pop back to where they were. So that's the only way um, I figured it out. Uh, I have a trick for that. OK, so Alex actually knows how to do this. Only just the timeline. Mm, OK. okay. How much time do you spend animating? Oh, do you mean like retiming uh, frames in the timeline? Uh, I might know Alex's trick for that because I, I do something similar. So like if I want this one, these three frames to move over, I'll drag uh, the frames in the timeline. Oh, OK, OK. Uh, so I'm going to show you what I do. Uh, which is uh, a similar, like a trick. And I wonder if it's the same trick that Alex uh, was talking about. So like, let's say, um, let's say I've done some drawings, right? Um, but, I, and I want to, um, I have this gap in here. So I want to move, let's say I have even more drawings, right? You know, there's a lot of drawings over here. So I have to be very careful about moving them all. Um, so what I do, is uh i just note that this is a three frame that this drawing is four frames long right here and i drag this end over to here and then i do the retime thing to move this drawing back so that it's four frames once again and that effectively moved that whole group over so it's a little bit of like a hack and a workaround but it does work for moving multiple frames um now if i wanted to move like this whole chunk of frames over. Yeah, that's the trick. Yeah, I, ha I had to do that a bunch uh, during 
production on the commissions. Um, so if I want to move like this whole group over, let's say to start at one second, for instance, um, I'll time stretch this first frame right here over to one second. And then I'll just close, uh, bring it back to one frame. And now it's moved over. Uh, once, once again, it's a little bit of a, of like a hack of a trick of a workaround, but it, once you get comfortable with it, you can just start thinking in that way. And, and it's, it's pretty easy to do. And I also don't doubt that there will be an update to, you know, to the software in the future that allows, um, you to move frames more, more easily just because it's such a requested, um, feature. Uh, uh, nobody told me about the two finger gesture during the commission. I think I had to ask Georgie about it. Um, there were, I asked Georgie about so many things and I love Georgie. Georgie's amazing. Um, I, I would, I would send an email like once a week being like, wait, how do you do this thing? And then I would like film myself struggling to do it. And then she would help me out. So big shout out Georgie. Um, yeah, so I think it would be fun to get into something that's a little more complicated. I was hoping to show like this fake uh, 3D effect. Um, yeah, which which I think um, could be pretty fun to, to go through. Uh, I have a question regarding sound. I imported a clip with sound and I couldn't figure out how to mute it. Is there a way? Yeah, I can show you right here. So I have this obnoxious, um, <laughs> I have this obnoxious uh, piece of music I wrote for for this um i might need to turn on desktop audio for you to hear it can you hear can you hear this playing right now yes no no maybe not let me try this here hmm I need to troubleshoot this, I guess. Uh, let me add an audio input capture. Okay. We'll say that this is from... Maybe this will work. See if this happens. No, that's... Hmm. I actually don't know how to set up my iPad audio, unfortunately. Desktop audio. Let me see if I can change this preference really quick. Bear with me while I while I struggle to do stuff. Whoa! The, is that playing for you guys? I'm hearing it doubly in my headphones. I hope that that you're not. So you can hear that, right? It's in the way I'm hearing it's playing twice and I don't know. I don't know why. So I've got to do some troubleshooting on my own. Um, yeah, maybe delete this one. Anyways, um, I'll just leave this on for the time being, but, uh, basically it's really simple to <laughs> all that for me to say, uncheck this box right here. So see this little check box right here. Um, uh, you just turn it off to turn off the audio. And I, this audio is comprised of two different versions of the song playing over each other. So I turn them all off and now I have no audio, um, playing. So yeah, if you, if you want to mute your audio, you just check this little checkbox right here. Um, if you imported a movie file, um, that's a little bit different, um, which I can show you right here. Um, so I have this little thing I made. Don't know why it's playing twice. So anyways, um, the audio is on here, but I have this clip, right? If I import in a movie file, what you have to do to turn off the audio is you go into filter and you go to volume down here. And then for the volume, you just set it down to zero. And then you set it back up when you're ready to listen to it again. So that's like a workaround for uh, changing audio levels on video clips. Um, anyways, yeah, I wanted to show you guys how to make like a fake 3d effect. I think like that could be, I think like that could be fun, right? Um, is anyone interested in checking that out? 
if you want on my Gumroad, there's a free version of the cube and there's also like a, a paid version with this artwork and stuff. So if you, if you wanted to, you don't, you don't have to spend any money if you don't want to, there's, um, all the planes you'll need for the cube, um, in, in both, in both, uh, Gumroad files. So yeah, you can check that out if you want. I'll actually give you a little bit of time to, uh, check out either the, free one or the the one that's five dollars whichever one you want um on my gum road um i'm gonna go uh grab some coffee really quick and be right back to uh to look look at this and regardless of whether you got the the paid one or the the free one the the um, layers should be the same and we should be able to do the same effect with both of them so give me one minute i'll be right back i'm gonna go grab coffee I'm muting myself Oh my god, coffee's so good. Also, I just went to this place last night. Um, it's like a, a bar that sometimes has food stuff. And like some of the best tamales uh, I've ever had. And they're only there on Friday. So I just, I was so lucky to, to come across them and uh, grab some delicious tamales. So I'm going to be eating more of those. Later after the stream, and I'm very excited. Uh, uh, does anyone remember how the how he did the drag thing with the timeline? Shrink it, just one clip. I tried, but it's not dragging the rest of the frames with it. Nothing better than limited time tamales. True, true. How he did the drag with the timeline? Shrink just one clip. Oh, um. You, it might be that you have to drag, um, you have to hold and drag on. So you're talking about this, right? Um, Alicia, where it moves like the other stuff with it. Um, I don't know if that's what you're talking about, but it's basically like holding on the edge of the frame, right? So you might be seeing this happen where it's not moving the rest of the stuff. Um, so if you hold on the edge of the frame, but then you also put another finger elsewhere on the timeline and then do the, the dragging, then it'll move everything with it. So the, have you tried that? Does that work? Okay. Okay, try it now, cool. What kind of tamales? Uh, you like jalapeno and cheese. I would like jalapeno and cheese, except for I, I'm like lactose intolerant, so I can't, um, can't eat cheese. And everyone's going to hate me for this, and everyone does every time I say it, but I don't actually like cheese that much. Um, so, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't like cheese that much. Um, but, um, yeah, the ones that I have were like chicken and vegetable, and they were so good. I'm, I'm looking forward to next Friday when I can go again. Limited time tamales. All right, so let's make let's make this happen. This three D effect right here. Um, so if you look at the um, the files that are, um, it's okay to be wrong about cheese. That's so mean. All right, um, I'm gonna turn off the cat for the time being. I'm gonna turn. Uh, we're gonna turn off the fan. So we have this room file right here. We have this group. I don't, I'm going to rename this group to like main offset later. So I have this perspective grid in here. Uh, so that should be in place. And if it's not in the files, uh, let me know for either of the files and I'll make sure to re-upload that correctly. Um, if you purchase or download anything from Gumroad and there's any like updates to the file, you can... Um, you can get you can 
you can download updates like later as well. So, um, all right. So these are labeled. So this is the back wall. So that's not going to go anywhere. Um, for the right wall, we're going to want to uh, use an effect in this software called, uh, and I'm going to do it at the um, one second mark. Yes. No, I'm going to do it zero. Um, we're going to use an effect called distort. What the distort does is it allows us to move the individual, where did it go? That's right there. Move the individual uh, corners of a thing to uh, give it the illusion that it is um, distorted. In, in this case, so it looks like perspective. Um, so now we have a wall in perspective, sort of. And I'm going to actually change the resolution of the stage. Um, what's, what's 4K? 3680? I, I typed that on my computer. What the hell? 3680, is that right? Or I'll look it up because I don't know. 4K resolution. 3840. Oh, I was, I was close. 3840. Okay, I'm going to expand the width of this document a little bit so I get more, so I can see more of the um, uh, works. I just did it out of, uh, pardon the way, out of order, like the corner first. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I'm going to put this guy a little further out and then just make sure that it is sitting on this corner. Um, and I'm noticing that it's kind of hard to see my back wall. So I'm going to make another track below everything. Um, where is everything? New track here. I think I might have to make it with this group closed for it to work correctly. Um, bear with me while I stumble. I'm going to put this track below everything. Cool. And I'm just going to paint in, uh, I don't know, a dark color so I can see things there. Up, 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 up. With this new brush I just imported, very fun. Um, cool. I don't actually like that color, so I'm going to you shift it. And this, had, uh, there's no reason why I don't, I just don't like the color. There you go. It's better as, as a gray color. Hey. Cool. Now I can uh, move around this stuff a little bit easier. I'm going to rename this to be like background temp or something. Oh, cool. main offset. We're going to go into the room and then we're going to go down to the right wall is in a good place. Um, one thing to notice if you're doing corner uh, distort and you go to the drawing tool, it'll remove the distort and put it flat again. So that's why it, I have the drawing tool selected right now. If I turn it off, it'll go back to being um, distorted in that way. So let's do the left wall now. Uh, we're gonna go to distort again. Left wall, left wall, yeah. And uh, for better or worse, this trick works the best if you're very accurate. So make sure you're lining it up to this perspective grid. Um, cool, now we're gonna get the ground. Uh, Start as well. Ground, 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 ground. Cool. And for this example, I already like drew in a little cat shadow and I did, you know, added some details and light and stuff to it. So um, if you were doing this on your own, you might want to add those types of details at a, at a later point. Um, after you have the perspective all figured out. Now we're going to go to ceiling and do the same thing. Uh, distort. Put the ceiling in place. Oh my god, it's coming together. It's a real live cube. Amazing. And then I'm going to fix some of these seams where things are a little bit ugly and things are a little bit off-centered. Um, I'm going to go back to this left wall and line this up a little bit better. And um, this is just an example with a cube, but if you've seen, um, there, there's, some, there's some artists out there that have done really 
complicated, really intricate, like fake sort of perspective things um, with these different tricks. So if you get the gist of it, you can kind of go wild with um, what you want to try and uh, create the illusion. Um, cool. So now this looks like uh, it's a room that's in perspective. Um, and now this is the really cool part. I'm going to uh, slide all these keyframes over so that we're starting the movement at one second. So it can kind of sit there for a little bit. And slide these over to one second. So in order to do that, you just press on the keyframe and then move it over. That looks like one second. Cool. So this will be our first, um, the first uh, keyframe of the position of the room. So we're going to also take our room and add a movement and scale keyframe to the room. The room is moving everything all at once. That's why it's uh, all grouped together like that. I'm going to delete that one that's at the beginning because I don't. Actually, I'll leave it there for now. So now we're going to move our room to anywhere else. And uh, you can do the same like position that I'm doing if you want or not. I'm going to move it. Uh, where am I moving it? Over here. Like, <clears throat> I guess uh, here could be cool. And then suddenly when it moves over here, it's like, oh, that doesn't look like it's in perspective anymore. Okay. So what we're going to do, uh, sort of painstakingly, is go in and add another uh, distort keyframe uh, at the same time at this three second mark. And then we're going to edit um, just the points that are closest to us in perspective. We're going to leave the other points where they are. Um, the reason for that is we're moving the whole back. We're moving the back wall and then the perspective is just the front wall is ad is adjusting. Um, hopefully, it'll make sense as we get through it. So I'm going to line this up to the perspective. Line this one up to the perspective. And then let's do this with all the other pieces as well. One up. This one. Up. Oops, didn't mean to move it. And then this one as well. This one up. It looks really weird when it's distorted this much. Uh, you see like the window jumping around a bunch. And then we're missing one wall, right? Which one are we missing? Uh, so now we'll line this one up right here. And this one up over here. And you can see my walls, <clears throat> my walls crooked. So we'll make sure that's straight right here. And then I'll adjust the ground to kind of compensate for that. Okay, if it's a little wonky, I mean, this this all looks sort of hand-drawn to begin with, so it can be a little bit off. But now you can see, whoa, I'm going to turn onion skins off. Whoa, it's like shifting around in perspective now. Um, cool. So uh, if you if it's not shifting around in perspective, right, and things are moving at different angles or like different degrees, um, let's say, for instance, um, th these two are set to linear, right? And so you can see s something's not quite right, right? Like, look at this corner up here. You're like, what, what? Why are you separating right there? What's going on? So uh, the reason for that is that there's different easings on these keyframes. So uh, you select in between the two keyframes and long press right there with either the pencil or your, or your finger. Set all easings and set it to ease in and ease out for every one of these five tracks. There's just a chance that they might have defaulted to something else. Um, okay, so now we're going to do one more position for the sake of this um, the tutorial uh, example. I'm going to move it over here. I'm going to do a really low angle. and. This is, this is cool, but it gets much cooler when we do the offset. So just, just wait for that part. That's the part I'm, I'm most excited about. Oh, this is going to be hard. I can't even see my grid. Let me pick a different angle. Maybe here. I can at least see my grid a little bit. Let's see. 
Yeah, okay. We're going to go a little low angle and a little like the that. Hopefully I can get this to work. I don't know. All right, so this one should line up with that line sort of. This is going to be a little like boring and a little bit more of the same, so. <laughs> I don't know if I repeated what Colin said, but he said it's an illusion, Michael. That's from Arrested Development. Very quotable, Joe. If you haven't seen it. Very good. Um, so let me get this one in place. And look at this totally messed up looking thing over here. That's going to look a little nicer once we move these points out. You can see my, I did not do this correctly quite yet. So let me split the difference here. And that feels a little bit better. And then I'll adjust these uh, ground planes to match, hopefully. Cool, let me adjust the ceiling. Um, go. And uh, I'm showing a lot of this like, you know, sort of keyframing, transforming, distorting uh, trick stuff. But actually the thing that I mostly use this uh, software for is more like um, hand-drawn animation, uh, frame by frame type stuff. But I just think this stuff's neat and accessible. So I wanted to show it a little bit more. Um, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. That's like almost in perspective but it's a little bit off. I think that this needs to come out even more. And uh, so that will adjust this one. You get, you get to see me uh, get it wrong live, live on camera, which is, you know, just something that happens. Let's see this one probably come up. Uh, it's gotta really be intense right here to, to fit with this perspective. And with something that's already painted this roughly, it doesn't have to be perfect perspective. It can be a little bit messed up. I'm gonna try. All right, go back to this wall. Here we go. Is every is anyone else like actually doing this um, with with the files? Well, uh, must have been fun when you just found about found out that you can make this. Oh my God, as soon as I saw that you could do distort, which is um, similar to After Effects corner pin, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to do some, I'm going to do some fun stuff with this. So it's not quite perfect. What is this? Um, the window is sort of like dropping down. So I want to figure out a way to fix that. It might be like moving one of these left or right a little bit. There we go. That fixed it. Cool. Now the window's not dropping down. All right. So this is this is cool and all, and I'm going to make it loop back to itself. So the way I'm going to do that is set a keyframe at zero for all these distorts, and then uh, um, we're we're about to get to the the most fun part. So just bear with me. I'm going to move uh, this over to seven seconds and move all these keyframes seven seconds or roughly seven seconds. Then it'll return back to its uh, original position, which will make a sort of a loop happen. Yeah. Okay. So we got a loop. This is the funnest, fun, most funnest part is now that I have this room moving around, um, I can go back and make my uh, stage um, a square because I want to have the square as a reference. And now I can make this cube look like it's sort of rotating in place rather than um, you're still at distorting the walls, LOL. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I can kind of chill out a little bit, but I am eager to get through this. So I might, I might get to the next steps. Also, if you are uh, watching along with this, this is going to be saved on YouTube, so you can you can rewatch the VOD at any time to um, to like go through these steps again. Um, yeah. Also, if anyone has any questions about any of these steps, let me know. I'd be happy to 
Um, I'd be happy to, to walk through them and, and step back a few steps or whatever. Colin says, I got to head to work, but enjoy the rest of the stream, fam. Don't forget to like the video for your boy, Michael. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, how do I fill bucket and procreate dreams on a different track? All right. Well, how about this? Let's take a little break from this and I'll show you what I do. Um, while, uh, you know, some other people catch up with the, uh, the distorting, distorting stuff, um, make a new. So short answer is you can't, um, yet. I imagine that this is something that they will add, but, um, the long answer is let me draw some, some, something. This beautiful animation. I know you're all impressed. I'm impressed with myself, with whatever this is. Sort of kidding. A few tips on animating water. I don't. I don't even know how to animate water. Um. I think. I think for animating anything, observation is key. Like learning to look at what makes something do the the thing that it's that it's doing, and then. And then figuring out how to translate that into animation is actually like, that's where a lot of the fun happens. Um, so like breaking things down into abstract shapes, for instance. Ocean waves, that's another thing where you probably just want to like go out and look at ocean waves for a long time and see how you can, you can break them down into different shapes. So here's this beautiful animation. Wow, amazing. So if I wanted to fill this, um, the way I've been doing it, so the way that I did it for this, um, I'm gonna turn that audio off since it's echoing. Uh, but so for this, the way that I did uh, the fills for this is I duplicated down the line work below and then I dragged fill bucket uh, into the layer below it. So once I'm happy with my line work layer, um, and this is, this is sort of a workaround. This is the only way that I really know how to do it. If there's another way that anyone's figured out, please let me know. So I basically just duplicated this layer. And now on this bottom layer, uh, I can fill stuff in like, like this. Oh, it's going slow. Okay. And, uh, I don't think it's the best way to fill animation. Um, but it you can do stuff pretty pretty quickly. And like for instance, if I wanted to paint a shadow on this, I could um set up some blank frames. And uh let me split this. Delete this one, duplicate this a bunch, duplicate, duplicate, and then Use that trick that I just learned to copy and paste a few of them. Amazing. I love that. Um, now, this is really cool. I can group all of these to group them. Set it to a clipping mask. You long hold, you go to mask, and you go to clipping mask. And now whatever I paint on this new layer will only affect... This is not right. Add an extra track in there. Will only affect... the layer that's below it. So I think that that's very cool. Um, I've had so much fun doing like clipping mask stuff. So like if I wanted to paint a shadow on this weird blob, I could like do this and then go over right here. And then just like my favorite thing about animating uh, these days when it's not for like a client or whatever, is just like experimenting and going in and, and painting stuff directly into my animations. I think that's really, really fun. So now this thing has like a shadow to fill that in. Hello? Okay. Friend? It's 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 having a it's doing a struggle, which is fine. Alright, cool, cool, cool. So now now this thing, I guess it's lemons. Uh, I don't know. The birth of lemons. Uh yeah, you can put a group on a clipping mask, which is very, very cool. Um I could get more into that after we finish up the uh, the fake 3D room stuff. Where did it go? Okay. Is this it? Okay. 
So this is the once you have your room set up and and animated to that perspective grid. This, in my opinion, is the most fun uh, trick to like make it look like it's rotating in space. Sort of like, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just do it right now. So on this main offset group, which is grouping everything we just animated, um, lemon mitosis, very true. I'm going to set um, on the same timing as these other keyframes, movement and scale keyframes for the whole thing. And it's like, oh, why did you do that? That didn't do anything. Now we're going to go back to where we move stuff and set a new movement and scale keyframe and drag it back to being flush with our, our um, <laughs> that's cool, right? Let me turn off the perspective grid. Drag it back to being flush with the edge of the canvas. And then we're going to go to our next frame where it's off in the distance over here and drag it back to being flush. And now this one did a little bit of a zoom. So we got to scale it down so it fits. A little wonky, it's not the same ratio, but that's cool. So now, we do a little zoom effect back there, and then we go back, oh, let me redo that move. And then we go back to where we were, we'll drag this first keyframe that got created over to the end to make it loop more. Cool. That's, this is, this is my favorite trick. So this looks very cool in my opinion. That's the stuff, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so I think that that's like one of the coolest things. And then if you wanted to put someone in this room, like right now we have this cat, right? And they are grouped to this whole offset thing. So they're actually moving with the offset, which is not good. So that's easy to fix. We just do the same thing that we did with the offset. We're going to say, put a move keyframe on all the different parts where the, the keyframes line up. I'm just going to put his feet where the shadows rest, right here. Oh, actually, let's start him off a little bit lower. <laughs> Delete that key. And it looks like the feet aren't lining up, so I'm going to make them a little bit bigger. There we go. Oh, whoops. My bad. So this is really just going to be like eyeballing them into place. And then we want them over here. So let's put them right here. Make sure that that feels good. Yeah, they're standing there now. And then we want to, um, I'm trying to line up the feet with where I marked the, the feet shadows on the ground. I'm going to move them over here. And this is like a zoom effect. Uh, so I wonder if they get bigger, if that would be cool. Wow. Does that look right? Let's see. It, it looked kind of cool if they got, hmm. I can't really tell, so I'm just going to leave it. And then he goes back to his old position. So we'll go back to the beginning, set a keyframe, which copies that information from here, and put it back over here. So now, got this cool loop, loop going. Yay. Yeah, so that's the stuff. That's the, uh, the cat, cat, um, cat perspective trick, right? And then all these extra stuff, like he is in his own group, right? So we can, we can animate all of his movements independently. We could even go in and since it's already moving with the, the thing and we can add like a, like a little face to him, like maybe a little like, hmm. Oh, I'm going to use this brush from my sketchbook. Now he's like, I'm a little upsetty. Let's send that to the whole thing. It's the whole duration of this movement. So now he's got a face. It's not moving, but we could go through and add lots of extra drawings to make it jitter like that. Yeah, so that's kind of where we're at with um Yeah. That example. And uh I guess what I could do now is show you kind of like this this example like how to do this thing right here turn off the audio that echoing so interesting all right you kind of go through and show how to do this because this is like also in that same direction of sort of like uh, a trick uh, less of like animation fundamentals and more like understanding the software and the different um functions of it so would anyone like to see like how, how you go about doing something like this?
Your style goes well with lo-fi music. Thank you. I've been I've been making some lo-fi music. That's that's what this is. This is one of the things I made. I don't, I don't want to listen to it echoey though. Uh, all of the workarounds and intricacies are helping many of the frustrations I keep running into. Thank you. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. That's that's literally why I wanted to do this stream. It's like it's it's an interesting software and it it functions in ways that are are sometimes a little obscure. So um, yeah, it, I'm I'm so happy to to help with any of that stuff. Um, yeah. So. It sounds like there's at least a few people who want to get into this. So if you if you downloaded the Gumroad um, thing, there is uh, this file right here, and um, uh, we we are gonna go through and figure out how to make this guy move through the environment. Um, I want to explain something really quick before we get into it. Um, basically. If you are driving in a car or on a train or whatever, and you see a field of um, like a, like a grove of trees or something like that passing by, um, here's you, here's your train or your car or whatever, and you're going this way. Um, you're gonna you're gonna um, see the trees that are right here. That they're, they're gonna go by. They're gonna seem like they go by at a much faster. Um, speed than like the trees that are all the way over here near the horizon those are going to go by really 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 slowly and so that's something to keep in mind when we're doing um like a fake parallax like a um what did they call it back in the day like do you, do you guys remember there was a name for it, it was like multi-plane camera that's what it was so we're essentially doing a multi-plane camera effect like they did in old school animation the things that are in the foreground, like so this uh, box, let's say it's like a building or whatever, um, are going to move more, more. Um, a big mountain in the background is going to move less. And everything in between will move in, in degrees from those two starting points. So d just keep that in mind as we're getting into this, because it can get a little confusing sometimes. So let's start off with the mountains. Um, so in order for this to loop as well, we have to make sure that the mount the keyframe for a mountain, um, like it starts and ends in the same position. So I'm going to take the mountain, track options, duplicate, and I'm going to go to the first frame and make the opacity really low. So we can line it back up with itself as we move it over. In this mountain, I've already duplicated the mountain over so that we can get back to its original position. So let's give it a try. We're going to go on the first frame, go to move and scale. We're going to go to the last frame, and our bear disappeared. He's, he's taking a nap. Um, I skipped a step. Sorry. So in this keyframe, I'm going to hold, press and hold on the keyframe and say expand, move, and scale. Now that I've got expand, move, and scale open, I'm going to actually um, drag this Y somewhere else. I'm going to get rid of scale. I'm going to get rid of location. The reason why I did this is I want Y to stay consistent. So when I'm moving it to the left, it doesn't change its Y position. So Y is somewhere else. That's just so we can keep track of it. Now we're going to go to the end, and we're going to just move X. Now X is going to go over, try to line up that mountain with itself. Uh, do we still have another mountain? It might be too faint to see. So let me turn the opacity back up a little more. All right. OK, OK. So now we can see it. We can line it up with itself. That's great. So let's go to the end. Then line it up itself. See, get really in close. We can line it up with itself. Same mountain. That, did I F something up? Good. You know what? That's close enough. Let's do it. Um, 
And then what I'm going to want to do is uh, set this to be set all easings as linear. So it's going to move like that. Uh, Alaska, he duplicates. Oh, so people are helping each other out in the chat. That's nice. OK. Um, so now I'm going to turn off our, our ghosted layer. I'm going to do the same thing with the tree. So now we have the mountains moving. So like I said, the things in, that are furthest from the camera are going to move um, the slowest, and the things that are closest to camera are going to move the fastest. So let's do the trees now. Same thing. We're going to do move and scale. Um, hold on. Get rid of this one. Hold on the keyframe. Expand it. Move Y somewhere else. Get rid of scale. Then we're going to go to the end. Actually, I just realized uh, we need to duplicate this. Back off to the and set the opacity low so we can match it up. So let me do that. Filter opacity. I think like 25% should be good. All right, now on this one, uh, that is not a low opacity. We're going to go to the X track. We're going to move this over until it lines back up again with itself. I actually don't remember where it was. Is it here? Oh my God, will it ever line up? Okay, there we go. Um, and then, oh my God, that's so much. Wait, no, that's fine. All right, um, I'm going to set all easings to linear. So that now we have this. Oh, that might be confusing with the ghosted image. Let me turn that off. So now we have this. Cool. OK, so the trees are moving faster than the mountains. I think that's about the right speed. I kind of set this up so that it would loop. Um, but if you're doing this on your own, you'll have to sort of um, troubleshoot the, the looping itself. That's not always the easiest. So now after this, we want to get the road markers to move. So um, I'm not going to do the ghosted thing because I don't want to. I'm just going to wing it. Now we're going to go to move and scale. Here. Same thing. Set all easings to linear. Now for the road marker, I'm just going to, I'm going to YOLO it. It's just going to go really far. Oh, wait, I didn't. Uh... All right. So now move the road marker over. Uh, does that, does that loop? Maybe it loops. Maybe I should have duplicated it so it loops perfectly. That's close enough. Um, yeah, I, can, I can do that just for the sake of uh, being thorough. OK, delete this uh, move. Set the opacity really. Mighty. Um, Line this up with my low opacity road. Where where is what looks like it's lined up? I have no idea. That one? That's lined up. Let's go. Okay. Cool. Um delete that. Cool. So now that should loop, hopefully. Alright, does it loop? I wasn't paying attention. Uh it's pretty close. It doesn't have to be perfect for, for this demonstration. Um the the key to getting something to loop um, is to have the final keyframe one frame after the the loop ends basically. So it's like if your loop is A B C D, you want to make sure that your loop and you know you want A to line up with A, right? You have to make sure that you don't see A twice. So it'll be A B C D A. And then you just have to cut it off. So it's A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. I could probably show that in a simpler way um, outside of this project file. But um, for now, that's, that's my weird explanation. All right, let's get this grass and the trees going. And then we can be done with this. Scale. 
to duplicate this track options duplicate the opacity low I'm sorry if this is very tedious uh, this is sort of like the same thing over and over again um, a little tedious but like worth it when you're done because fun expand set all easings linear I'm doing things like hell out of order now that's all right All right, now it should be okay. Okay, make sure that the grass lines up. The last. Oh, we did it. Now it should line up. It, th there's an extra, uh, extra A frame in there, so that's not good. But um, it's pretty close to. Uh, getting the illusion we want. Yeah, now he's moving. So let me get rid of this extra one. Option H. Cool. Now lastly, we're going to get the tree going. You get to illustrate in the style for your work. Sometimes. Sometimes I do. Um, this tree is just got to be going faster than grass. So let's just let's just kind of do it. Um, you know, this, <clears throat> let me separate these and get rid of Y over here. I'm not accidentally changing the Y value. Here, stop green, and then make sure it's linear. Uh, cool. Let's see if that works. It's moving slower than the grass, so let's just make sure we move it further. Yeah, okay, we want to be moving slightly faster than the grass. Cool. So now that we have that one, why do extra work? I'll just duplicate this track a few times. Deleted all those extra trees. So track options, duplicate, track options, duplicate, track options, duplicate. Whoops. Option. Okay. Now I'll just offset these guys a little bit. This one happens to here, and then this one, I guess, here, and then this one at the end, I suppose. So now, look at it. We got one tree, another tree, another. Do they pop on into the frame? No, they pop off, pop on off screen. So that's good. It looks a little jarring when you can see through the the, the parts that are supposed to be blacked out, but it does work. All right, so we have all these things set up. And if you have the project files, you can definitely be uh, following, following along. Um, let's see. Uh, Faith asked, hi, Faith. How's it going? Um, will this be available to watch after the stream? It looks awesome. Yeah, it will be available to watch after the stream. I'm going to leave this up um, on my YouTube channel so anyone who wants to check it out can for sure check it out. So now I want to do some fun stuff with this bear. Um, so. How about I show you guys how we animate this blink, like redo the blink. Um, let me get into the bear right here. Um, so basically the way that this blink is working is it's just one pose and then a few ease out, a crash into the blink, and then easing back in. That's that's the way that blinks usually work. It's like a, it's like a, crash shoot back out uh, easing back into being open that's kind of what like the curve of it would look like being a 3d like cg animator um uh, i think a lot about motion curves and stuff. uh so yeah i wonder if the stream is um still caught up real time I want to see what the latency is. I'm going to I'm going to say hey. Can you chat can you type hey in chat just so I can see where the latency is at. This is my first time streaming at this apartment with this setup, so I just want to kind of check to make sure. Oh, we got a hey right now. Okay, that's that's really really low latency. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Okay. That I just got scared seeing the um stream preview in my uh YouTube interface and it's like uh like 
15 minutes behind. So this is good. This is fine. Um, cool. So uh, do you guys want to see the blink? Uh, like see how, how I might do a blink or, or no? What do you think? Because I can also get to like the weird like distorted wheels and, and making his uh, truck bounce up and down and moving him around the, the cameras and stuff like that. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and animate a blink and then we'll get through the rest of it. So I'm going to go track options, duplicate. Um, I'm going to group this whole finish blink and just like group. And not group anymore. Oh, I exceeded the number of groups. That's fine. Track options, hide all. That'll work too. All right, so let's animate a little blink. I'm going to. Go and select all these guys and delete them. So now what I want to do to get a blink working is I just want to select this color right here. I'm going to make an like sort of like an ease out frame. So let's turn on onion skins. I'm going to make it almost the shape that the eyes were like this. But a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to go back and color sample the pupil. I'm going to put the pupils kind of back where they were pretty much. Oh, you know what? I'm color sampling through a, um, through a blending mode, which is not good. I'm not going to get accurate colors. So let me go back to my blending mode. Uh, where is it? This thing? No. Okay, yeah. So if I sample through this thing, it's going to give me different colors. So I'm going to turn this thing off for a second and redo this. I made a mistake. So let's go back in there. Let's grab this eye color that's now accurate. I guess. That's the danger of like animating and compositing and painting all at the same time. Even though it's fun, you can run into situations like that where you're like, why is this color not sampling correctly? Um, I'm sure you've had the same thing happen in Photoshop when you have like a bunch of blending modes and stuff like that. Alicia, hello, what's up? All right, so now I'm gonna make sure that this one holds for two frames, that's good. And then I'm going to do one more ease out frame right here. Julio. And then we're going to get that, um, we're going to get the pupils in there. Um, when you blink, your pupils have a tendency to shift down a little bit with the eyelid. So I don't know if you can see that, but, um, they, they just move down a little ever so slightly. So I'm going to make them move down a little bit. If I can indicate that at such a small scale. I just be a little rough. Um, and then on this one, have them like this. See how does this look? They're getting smaller, which is not good. Like uh, in width. Oh, uh, that kind of, hey, Michael, thanks for your feedback and streams for animation. You create art into only dreams appropriate to, uh, for this animation, you create art only dreams or procreate. Oh, all right. So I made all of the artwork in procreate first, and then I imported it into dreams. Um, this is not the best. Those aren't the best ease out frames, but whatever. So this is the crash. This is when things close. And then I'm going to do an additional frame where they're, they're lower like this. So it's taking some of that momentum of the blink and extending it and crashing a little bit lower. And then I'm going to take um, these, these guys and um, copy and then uh, paste and reverse the order of them. So yeah, so now we have blink. Okay, and I realized that I had this little bit of light painted on the edge of the eyeball, so I might put that in right here. 
did not mean to do that. Make sure that that fits with the, uh, the little rim light he's got going on. Not the best, not the worst. All right, cool. So now we got him doing this and I'm going to uh, do a little bit of extending this blink because this blink's shorter than the one that I animated before. So now when I watch this going, we got a nice blink going. Great. Cool. I like it. I think it's okay. Um, so now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to make these wheels do what the wheels should be doing. So this is, uh, where's my wheels? Is it here? Forgot where all my layers are. No, that's the car and the bear. Wheels are... Oh, okay, wheels extend for a little bit longer. These are my wheels. All right, let's do one at a time. I'm gonna delete this other one. Uh, so I just happen to know that if this wheel rotates 2,700 degrees, it'll look good. Just trust me on that one. Move in scale. Uh, we're gonna separate out these keyframes so we only have what I need. Get rid of X, Y, get rid of scale, get rid of scale. Rotate. Set the easing as linear. linear. Okay, now at the end, we're gonna go 2700. Why? Because I tried a bunch of different values and this one looked good. Oh look, it's going backwards. That's not right. Let's go for minus uh, 2700, even better. That does, that's not even close to fast enough. Let's do uh, 7200. Maybe that was the number I was thinking of. Mm, you know what? Let's just make it up. I'm going to say minus 5,500. Yeah, that looks. Mm, I think that looks pretty good. Let's go with that. That's fine. Um, so let me... This is this is another fun thing. So once now that the wheel's spinning, I'm gonna take the wheel and I'm going to take the select mode and group just select the wheel and group it by itself. Now that the wheel's grouped, I'm going to stretch it and rotate it into that cool like stylized sort of position. And it's rotating within that scale and within that rotation. So it's sort of impossible that a wheel would ever do this, but it fits with the style, so it's cool. And then now that we have that going, we can just uh, track options, duplicate, and move this other wheel to the front. Cool, I think it has to be a little bit higher to match up. So now we have uh, two wheels in this very stylized, sort of distorted way. Um, but there is a problem where our, our bear goes away which is not ideal. And the reason why I did this is because I wanted to animate my bear guy um, sort of like moving up and down, like the car is like shaking. Um, and I'll show you why I did it. So what we're gonna do is move and scale just the car so it goes like this. basically. Um, and I'm going to uh, expand it and get rid of X. Get rid this, this, and then every two frames, I'm going to adjust it. So up, one is down. Oh, actually, sorry, I need to um, undo that. I need to keep uh, X, but just not touch X. So that I don't accidentally fuck, uh, move anything. <laughs> Go over here. All right, so up here, we're going to do down. Let's see how that looks. Is that too much? And then here, we're going to go back. Let me just uh, only preview that part really quick to make sure that it looks good. Is that too much? I don't know. I think it is. So I'm going to move it down a little bit. Cool. Now, uh, if th I hope that there is one day a way to copy and paste keyframes, but I don't actually know how to do it right now. So 
the way we're going to do it is uh, 25 minus 5 minus this one is 0. Cool. So now he goes from zero to 15 minus. So I just sort of have to painstakingly put in the values over and over again, which is a little bit annoying, but I assume that this is something that will become a lot easier in future versions. Um, <clears throat> so this is, I sometimes Put myself into a corner doing very very boring stuff with animation that is tedious and makes my brain hurt um but the effect's good so you know, just suffer for our art a little bit sometimes this this is 15 so this is minus 15. i think i can be more efficient doing it this way You can also do this with the perform feature, just like record it, but I like, uh, I preferred like being ultra accurate, so I will very painfully do it this way. This is where everyone leaves the stream. They're like, what the so boring. Um, anyways, let me see where I left off. Zero, 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 zero. Okay, 15. 15 minus, 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 minus. I have not looked at chat since I've started this, so sorry. I'm trying to keep my brain in this one uh, very tedious dimension. Uh, 15 minus, minus, 15 minus. I swear this will be fun in a second. 15 minus. Okay, and then I'm going to extend this by one frame so I can put in one more uh, 15 minus and then hide it. Cool. So now it will loop uh, with a little little car wobble. Yay, there we go. <coughs> cool. So now he's going do 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 do. And now, so I don't have to do that too many times, and I could have, well, this is like the duration of the blink. So this is like the minimum amount of time I had to make this group. So now I can duplicate it. We have both the wobble and the blink in there. Yay. The wobble might be a little bit much. I think it's I think it's too much actually, but I don't want to go back and change it right now. So he's just in a very wobbly car. And I'm I'm okay with that, I think. Um <laughs> Yeah, he needs to get this car serviced. All right, he needs an oil change. Um it's very important. Uh, what frame rate are you working in? Uh, I believe this is 24. I usually work in 24. Um, I could explain like very specifically why I work in 24, but it's, it's so I have the option of animating things at 24 frames per second, but usually 24 and then every drawing I have is holding for two or three or four frames. So um, yeah, you hide the wobble if you need to animate something else. Um, I actually don't know how to hide the wobble. Um, that would be a good feature, though. I usually do these types of things uh, last so that I don't need to hide anything. Um, so yeah, wobble's a little intense, but we're going to live with it. And then what was the last thing I was going to do? Oh, yeah. So this whole car group guy. Um, I need this track anymore. Clean that up. So now I can use the perform thing and just sort of like Make him drive around a little bit. Oh man, I'm gonna, I need to slow down. I need to slow down. Not, I'm gonna get the F out of here. Yeah. And then he comes back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not the best performance. All right. So I'm saying get the F out of here because I don't know if I can actually swear on stream. I don't know what TOS is, but, and then he's like, I'm out of here. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm going to try to make it a loop again so that uh, he can come back to his starting position because loops are fun. Um, where is group? Okay. So in order to make something loop, there's a very easy trick. You just take your first frame and move it over here and hit frame again. It'll copy that. The, these positions are the same now. And then you drag that um, the first frame over to the end. He zooms away. And then I'll delete these ones. He's going to snap back so freaking fast. All right, let me drag this one over to the end right here. Cool. So now he goes back to the start position. But that's way too fast. That looks silly. So um, let me just have the zoom happen a little bit faster. He's just like, yeah. And then this part uh, happens a little bit slower. This is not great animation, guys. <laughs> I guess he reverses. All right, so that is going to look terrible, but um, it'll at least. <laughs> he just, OK, I can make that a little bit smoother. So um, this is where it loops to, right? But then. I'm going to say that he comes back only to here. And then maybe I can change just this easing, expand all easing, and make this one set easing linear so that. And then this one a little way. Yeah, so now he kind of drifts into his position a little bit better. Uh, let's see, I don't know if that'll loop super well. No, it doesn't. It looks terrible, but that's fine. Let's see what this value is. 403659. Let's try plugging that in. 403659. Oh, should be negative. 403.659, right? And then... That, does that loop? I might be uh, completely floundering here. Oh, it does loop. OK, I'll just make sure that this one is going linear as well as well. Uh, set easing to linear. Hopefully that loops. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, he spotted the cops ahead. That's true. does not loop at all. It would be possible to make it loop. Uh, um, is there a way to do it accurately, like moving and scaling? I don't know what you mean, but you can go into the values here um, to do things fairly accurately. Yeah, what, what, what do you mean, Faith, about doing it accurately? Um, yeah, so that's kind of the, the basics of how you do something like this. Um, with a lot more finesse, I could get this to loop. I just don't really want to do it on stream because that sounds painful um, to do. Uh, I could go through clipping masks and stuff if you wanted to see that. Um, but yeah, is there is there anything else people would like to see? I'd like to like uh, just talk to chat and like answer questions and uh take a look at um yeah things that are like that people are struggling with i guess so um it uh put some thoughts in the chat i'm gonna go grab a water because i'm all out right back Hello. Okay, so <clears throat> people mention clipping mask techniques. I think clipping mask uh, 
animation stuff is like really really cool in this software um yeah <clears throat> okay so if, a couple questions uh how'd you do all the cool camera pans and transitions in your garden wizard video um Prepare something long mountains and procreate. Okay, I can answer that one pretty quick, pretty easily, because I have the file right here. Um, so this is what the file looks like. So basically, you just make these things any length that you want. And then once you get it into dreams, you have to kind of duplicate the layer and stitch them to here. Let me show you an example. Out this video. So you just you just kind of make them any length you want that's like kind of somewhat longer than your what your prop is going to be. And then I would just duplicate this layer in dreams and sort of like mash them together. And once I let go of transform here um in Procreate, it's gonna crop it. So but that so that's unfortunate. But just so that like when I scroll over, there's more trees over here. I don't know if that if that makes sense. So I basically just gave myself a little bit of room. I painted everything in a way so that I could take the layer and duplicate it and slide it over so that I'll have an easy way to line things up. And then if, like for instance, for the trees, if I need to move the trees a lot further and two duplications is not enough, maybe I'll do a third one and then slide that over until it can line back up. I don't know if that answers your question, but that's kind of the way I prepared this. Um, how did you do all the cool camera paths and transitions in your garden wizard video? Um, so, uh, that's a really, uh, long answer to that question, but I basically, a lot of stuff was planned out in storyboarding and then, um, the actual transitions, a lot of it was like, I painted a long, um, a long, painting for the background. Well, Sudarshan helped me paint the backgrounds, but I uh, laid it out so that as the position of the layer was moving, it would look like the, the distorted perspective was changing. Um, I can actually like get into that project file in a different stream. I can't do it on this stream because I, 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 I don't have the uh, project files for this version of Procreate Dreams. Um, like I said, I did uh, a lot of the work in like a beta or an alpha version of Dreams. So I need to um, get those files ready. And then once they're ready, I can um, I can show you like very specifically how I did that type of thing. Um, clipping mask techniques. I think that'd be kind of cool to look at clipping mask techniques as kind of like the last um, kind of thing that I show before I call it a day on this stream. Unless there's anything else that that anyone would like to see. Oh, I think I've been hunching over. Make sure you guys check your posture, posture check. Make sure you're hydrated as well. <laughs> Did I do storyboard in storyboards in Procreate Dreams? Yes and no, uh, because Procreate Dreams was not ready yet at the time I was doing storyboards. So um, for like one of the projects, I did the storyboards in Flash and another project did the storyboards in Procreate. And then I brought them into Dreams when I was ready to sequence them and um, cut them up and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I was actually working on the storyboards before there was even like a pre-alpha build of Dreams. So I couldn't, I couldn't actually do like the full storyboarding process in Dreams. That said, and I'm not a storyboard artist, so take this with a grain of salt, I think Dreams would be pretty cool for storyboarding. It can do all the picture moving and like scene scaling and like um, transitions and layers that you would need in like to do to have like a professional storyboarding software like um like uh storyboard pro or something like that yeah <laughs> i unmute the stream to hear you self-report bad posture shame well i mean you got to give me credit for me me asking everyone to do a posture check bugsy i mean i'm i i got that from you so you know i i appreciate the uh the posture checks and the um the hydration checks and the threats of, of violence if if somebody's not not doing either. Yeah, fair enough. Um so yeah, how about let's do clipping masks. 
Um, I thought that this project might be a good one to get into for Clipping Mask, but it's actually like a lot of layers and a lot of stuff. So let's make something custom, um, like a little dancing guy or something. Uh, so I'll animate, I guess, a paint guy. Um, no, I wanted to be like te teal gray. Um, so this is my guy. Mm, big head. And he's going to be dancing. All right, so I'm going to show you clipping mask stuff. Uh, show me those onion skins, please. All right. Uh, we'll just do an up and down first, and then some eases. And put this on threes. I don't know, I've been liking threes lately. It just looks good. And then at the top, have them ease in at the top. Let me uh, slide this over. Some easing. Come on. All right. Put frame that's easing into this position. This will be a dancing guy, I promise. Just give me a minute. Um, let's see, does that play without any other drawings? These all threes. Then bring this back. All right, cool. Let's see if this plays. No, that's awful. Okay, let me adjust it. So up, up, up. Down, just like moving them frame by frame. Down, down. Okay, cool. Yeah, up and down, up and down. Okay, I'm gonna add one more frame. Up, up, down. I'm gonna add one more one that goes like back up again. But I'm gonna take this middle one so that it doesn't look like like I'm cheating, even though I am. And this one will go back up again. Cool. So, still ugly. Let me make it more prettier. Uh, I'm just trying to make like uh, something that's like bobbing up and down it's for like a little dance. Yeah, that looks cool. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh, okay, um, let's put uh, like uh, some arms on it, right? Or like a neck. This is the neck. Neck. Yeah, I've got a neck. I've got a neck. I've got a neck. Everybody have a neck. Um, cool, so now he's got a neck. Yeah, and some kind of like body. I'm gonna give him like a smaller body, like like this. Maybe the body's sort of like offset from the head a little bit. So like when the head goes down, the body takes a minute to catch up. Then it starts to go down. Then it catches up a little bit later. Continues going down, longer neck, and it's I don't know. Will that play? I might have fucked something up. Yeah, I'm dancing. I, it works okay, so I'm gonna give him a little, little ground plane, uh, which will be let's give him long legs. So that's the ground, I guess. And then now we're gonna draw little little stick legs like this. Ooh, bouncy! Yeah, little stick legs. Uh, maybe like together legs for style. And then they can kind of come together when he gets high up, like they get pushed together. Um, and then we'll have a little in between right here. Do do do. Got a neck. I don't know why that, that's stuck in my head now. And then when he comes down, we're gonna make him uh his legs get a little bit bendy. Whew. 
Maybe more bendy. More bendy. More bendy legs. More bendy. Bendy, bendy legs. Okay. And then uh, maybe they start to bend here. And then I think I need to go back to my first frame and make sure that the um, the first frame is actually a little bit bendy too, so it flows from this one back to this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna bendify these light legs. Bendify is an animation term that you should know if you're an animator, by the way. Um, I, it's not. I'm lying. Uh, and then I think we we should make them have wiggly arms, right? Does does wiggly arms sound good? I think this should be good. Let's see what this looks like. Do 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 do. Oh, uh, so it'll, uh, dreams will loop the longest frame of your animation. So I'll make sure that this. <laughs> uh, it looks funny. Okay. Um, I'm going to make the arms like do this. So, uh, watch me flail as I try to make, uh, uh, an impromptu sort of like sine wave thing. Looks like Squidward. Hell yeah. Um, that's going to be really hard, man. I'm going to make the arms kind of thick because I don't know. Do you like it? Uh, it does look like Squidward. Oh my God. It's even like Squidward color. Let's see. So he just came up. The hand should actually be down. So like, maybe like. This kind of thing. Okay. And then we're going to go, they're going to continue up like this. Also, when I animate, like for jobs and stuff, I'm talking to myself all the time, like saying, like, oh, this should go up. Wait, no, that's too long. Oh, I need to put that up, put it down now, whatever. I don't know. Do you guys do that? I talk to myself all the time when I'm making art. And I guess when I'm doing anything, like cleaning my apartment or something. Uh, and this look good here. Well, this is probably going to look terrible. All right. Hopefully it, hopefully it loops. I don't think it will. <laughs> it kind of works. Uh. Um, maybe I need to just like, let's see, what would be a good transition from here to here? Maybe it's just this frame that has to change. Yeah, it might be like this frame that has to change. I'll put, I'll put, um, move these over so that this is more of an in-between of the other ones. Bird trying to fly. It does look like a bird trying to fly. I was hoping it would be more like a dance, but you know, I'll take, I'll take whatever I can. Whatever I can get. Does look like a bird trying to fly. Um, back. I'm working on a two minute animation. From your experience making dreams commissions, is it better to do it all in one file? Break it down into scenes into different files. Probably better to break it down into scenes in different files. Um, I did it all in one file because that was like the brief for um, like, like working on a commission for Procreate, they wanted it to all be in one file. I just made sure that that was clear at the beginning of our um, working in dreams, but it, it's probably best to have the flexibility to move your edit around somewhere else, like um, in Premiere or, um, any other editing software that people use? I, I use After Effects for everything. Um, I don't know. The, the fact that it looks like a bird flying is kind of bugging me. So I might undo all the arms. I'm so sorry. I want to I wanna do something else. So he came up. Let me just try a wiggle, wiggly thing. This. Maybe it'll work. Or maybe I'm just like going to waste a bunch of time. It is very Squidward. Is 
this one. My favorite animated movie. I mean, I love the Iron Giant. Have you seen the Iron Giant? I also love Wally. The Iron Giant makes I cry every time the Iron Giant exists. Uh, struggling. This maybe. I'm gonna go backwards now, so I don't have to think. Um, it's going from the wiggles going from left to right, so. And let's see, do can I? Dude, this is not gonna work. <laughs> I know it's not gonna work. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Uh, so now we just have to fill in the in between. Hopefully, work. Left to right, left to right. Okay. I think this will work. Left. God, that's not right. Okay. And then maybe no one will notice. Okay. There we go. Oh, it's even worse. Oh my god. Failing in real time. This is great. Let's see. Single hand fist pump could work. Alright, let's do that. That's that sounds way better. All right, cool. Fist bomb. And then the fist bomb will, will hit the apex. Where does it look like it'll hit the apex? Okay, maybe it happens just before the head hits the top. So head hitting the top right here. So we'll do the hand up in the air right here. So it'll be like this. Yeah! And then uh, it'll be coming up in this one. Coming up, oops, this one. I know this is supposed to be for clipping mass, but now I really want to get this guy right, so. And then it'll be at its lowest here, I suppose. So let's see how that feels. Be a little higher on that. Starts to come down, down to here. Starts to go up again. This, how's that look? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it should be in the air for a little bit longer though. See, see that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, this will be this will be good enough to show uh, clipping mass. So, where's the most extended version of the arm? It's that one. Make sure that it's pretty extended. This, us, this one. Need to reference that one as a little bit lower. Good, and then we can just kind of make it make the rest up from there. Now, elbow bends a little bit. Elbow bends a lot here. Okay. Yeah. Getting ready to punch. Punch. He's like, gonna do it. All right. Yeah. 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 And then I guess the other arm's just kind of hanging out. So I'll just fake the other arm. I'm not thinking at all about the other arm, so it's probably not going to be the, the greatest animation, but we will see. I think we can have it drag a little bit. So, cool. I think that'll work. Yeah, 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 okay. So now, now we can finally get into clipping mass, which is like what, what I wanted to do. Full time.
Um, so first steps first, we're going to take this guy and I'm going to uh, group all of this together. And next step, I'm going to make a new track and um, just make a blank drawing of something that to erase. So now I have uh, some frame, a frame to play with. Make this three frames long and duplicate it. Um, Copy, paste. So now I just have blank frames ready. So I'm, I'm going to make a, a few of these. These are called like my blank groups. Rename it. Okay. <clears throat> Duplicate it once to start. Um, so now I'm going to take blank. I'm going to call this one, uh, what do we call this? Uh, I. We're going to use clipping mask for his eye. Um, and I'm going to select my group up here and I'm going to say uh, mask, clipping mask. So now this group is clipping to the one below it. So what I can do, draw an eye. And I'm going to be clever. I'm only going to draw two eyes. Whoops. I'll find that right in. Here's my eye. <clears throat> and then what I'm gonna do we're gonna draw I think it could be a little further up on the head, like maybe up here. And then we're gonna draw a pupil, which Let's see. Maybe like this cat type of thing. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So, and then I think what's going to be clever is we're going to only do two and then just like duplicate them. So, I'll redo that. Dip, dip, dip. Grab this color that in the center, hopefully. Uh, well, that's like close enough, I think. Well, I'll just make it scale it a little bit. I think the, I, the pupil went up a little bit too high, so I'll just try and paint that down a little bit. Cool. Nice. Okay. So what we're going to do is uh, delete all these. Um, now that this is clipped to this, I can um, move it around on him. So I'll take these two guys and I will um, copy and paste. paste. Now it's not exactly doing what we want it to do, but we can make it move with the head. So I can make it go up. And then stay there a little bit. And then when he goes down, I can make it sort of down. I'm going to set the anchor point to right here and then do a little bit of like scaling for this frame. Put it down again. Maybe make this one lag behind a little bit. So now, doing something pretty cool, right? Um, but we don't have to stop there with clipping masks. Um, Let's say we wanted to add some shadows to him. So I'll take this blank file. I'm going to duplicate it, uh, duplicate track, and then put this over the eye. And I'm going to say mask, clipping mask again. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say hold down on my layer right here, say blend mode, and go to multiply. And what I want to do is pick a cool color. Since he's kind of like in this cool range, I'll do like a uh, like something like this as a, as a multiply color. So it's it's more on the warmer side. Maybe even push the warm even further. Um, it might look cooler to make it uh, pink. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so now I can go in. I can paint like his head casting a shadow on his neck frame by frame. Turn off onion skins because I can just kind of blow it. 
Cool. Now, got a little bit of dimension to him. That's pretty cool, right? And then uh, this is all using clipping masks, which I think is very fun to kind of interactively uh, do some stuff, do some um, some painting and some animation at the same time. So that's pretty cool, right? Someone looks pooped. What, me? Do I look tired? I might be tired. I am tired. Um, get some. It's going right here. Uh, all right, so let's check that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And then to go even further with the clipping mask idea, we can give him like clothing. So let me take this blank layer. Let me uh, duplicate it again. I'm going to put it um, on here. Uh, in between these two, right here. Oops, not working. I need to make a blank track to move it first. Holding on this and then scrolling down, and then I'm gonna set this as a clipping mask too. Uh, it comes together quick. The mask looks so good. Yeah, this is my this is one of my favorite parts about working in this software. We have this pink color. What if like wearing a pink shirt, a pink shirt on him. Kind of cute. And then can also give him pants if you want. All right, so now he's got a shirt. <laughs> Give him some pants. Uh, we want to make it obvious since the shadow colors um, make it like jeans like this. I don't know if that's too obvious. So maybe a darker color would be more obvious like this. Got like just above knee length jeans on. Like a punk rock guy. Cool. Yeah. Um so yeah, that's that's sort of uh a rundown of clipping mask. I'm gonna do one more thing which I think is pretty fun. I'm going to change the background color to uh make put him in darkness. Uh paint style works well with it over the work I usually use. Trying it out. Cool. Yeah. Let me know how it works out for you. Um, so this last uh, track options, Jade, um, last one to bring it all home. You're going to set this blending mode to add. We are going to get orange. And now we're going to do everyone's favorite, rim light, left side. I love a rim light. And um, I know that there are people in chat mentioning that like they don't usually do like a painted animation style, and that's that's fair. I I think I like to do stuff this way because I I really love painting, and so it feels natural for me. Um, but you can you can do similar. You can take similar kind of approaches for um a more traditional animation style as well. Whoops. Cool. So here we go. It's got a little bit of dimension um, 
with with that that rim light so yeah all right so that is um kind of the last thing i guess i really have energy for for right now i'm getting a little bit tired uh just talking a bunch um but this has been really lovely and thank you all for for hanging out and checking out the the stream um i really appreciate uh everyone asking questions and showing up and, and checking it out um yeah if you want to um check out some of these project files like um this one oh we forgot to turn the the cool effects back on we gotta turn those yeah um don't know why it's blowing out like that that's really ugly so um have these this project file and um also um this one as well which is very fun to do together to to figure out how to do this so if you want to check those out those are on my gum road and there's also like um a free a free version of the cube so you don't have to spend any money if you don't want to um yeah and i really hope that you enjoy this stream this um stream uh Oh, I just read that in a very, I'm getting so tired. So I'm going to close this up soon. Um, this uh, stream, yeah, this VOD is going to be uh, available on my YouTube channel so you can watch it at any time. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave it up so you can you can check it out and, and draw along or whatever. Um, yeah, uh, I don't have much else to say. I am going to be doing another one of these streams where I go through all the project files for uh, Garden Quest and for um, the Witch's Ghost, which were the two animation commissions that I did for Procreate. Um, so I'm going to be going through the files and I'm going to be showing um, the, the files and also like some of like the concept art and biz dev stuff and like talk about the process. So that'll be another stream. I just need to... Um, I'm waiting on a few files to to get that uh, ready to go. So yeah, I would love if y'all stuck around to um, like, uh, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Instagram so you can get notifications about the next time I stream, which I think it should be sometime next week, but I it's, it's not for sure. I'll definitely announce it ahead of time. Yeah, so that's everything. And I'm going to uh, sign off now. So thank you so much. And I hope that you all have a lovely weekend. All right. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.